Hi, Alfred. Oh, hi, everybody. How are you? Welcome to another episode of Art Ventures at Home. I'm Mrs. Grass from the studio at Gallery North. Yeah. Welcome. It's Alfred. You know, for our project today, I was doing a little scavenger hunt, and Alfred, he came along with me. Wow. Yeah, he did. He's, yeah. he's very good for that. Wow. I think he's had enough art making for the day, though. Bye, Alfred. See you later. <laughs> gone but I'm still here and I'm glad you're here for another episode of Art Ventures at Home. I'm really excited for today's lesson. It combines two things that I love very much. One from the art world and one from the literary world. I'm talking about Maurice Sendak's Where the Wild Things Are book. Maurice Sendak, one of my favorite artists and illustrators. Yeah, he wrote his stories and he drew the pictures for them. Uh, and we're talking about visual texture today in the fine art world. So let's get started. All right, what is visual texture? This is um, a crazy pairing of words here. Did you know that you can find the word texture on a li the list of elements of art? Uh, if you don't know what the elements of art are, it's uh, seven things that an artist can use to create a work of art. Things that you find in fine art. There's line, color, form, value, space, shape, and texture. Texture is the way that something feels or the way that an artist makes something look like it feels. So, I've said it before, artists can be sort of magicians. We can create illusions with our art that trick people's eye. So for example, if I'm drawing a picture of Bear, I can make him look like he has fluffy, brown, luscious hair, but when I touch the painting, it's not gonna feel like Bear hair. Is it? No! So, as artists, we have the power to create something called visual texture. And that's the texture that we see, that we look at, that makes us think that something looks a certain way. Swirly, curly, sheep like hair, fishy, slimy, scaly skin, elephants, they need some lotion. Yeah! You can make something look like it feels like it has a texture. And today we're gonna to talk about that uh, and use visual texture to create our own wild thing. Okay, let's talk about the things you're going to need for today's project. First, crayons. You're gonna to need to make sure your crayons are the colors that you like and that they are naked crayons, that they don't have any paper on them. That means you need to peel off the paper so that you can use them to create a rubbing today. Second, you're gonna need paper. Computer paper, paper will do just fine. I have that here. Uh, a thinner paper is best for what we're making today. You'll also need a scissor. Make sure that you're using a scissor that's the right shape for your hands and the right size for you. Next, you're gonna need some glue. Glue stick is going to be the best for this project, but if you don't have that, you can get your liquid glue out or tape or even hot glue today. And last, you can get out some markers so that you can add some details to your wild thing when you're done with the collage. Okay, before you can start creating your wild thing, you need to go around your house and do a little rubbing scavenger hunt. Hunt for some, some things around your house that have texture and 
capture that texture by creating a rubbing of it. The way you create a rubbing of something is you put a piece of paper on top of something that feels rough or bumpy or uh, has some sort of texture to it and then you take the uh, edge of a crayon and you rub over that item uh, capturing its texture on the paper so it would be item paper crayon rub I'll show you how I do that with uh, a couple of puzzle pieces I'm just putting them down on my table I'm putting my paper on top and then I'm using the flat side of my crayon not the point I don't want lines I want the side and if I rub right over those items that are under there I can collect its texture or its shape or what it looks like when I touch my puzzle pieces I can feel them they have texture they have they're bumpy and smooth when I touch my drawing my rubbing it doesn't feel that way so this is my visual texture today I went around my house and collected some texture here's what I captured this texture came from this mirror This texture came from this wood panel sign. <laughs> this texture, this texture came from the tiles in my bathroom. This texture came from a wood wall. This texture came from a jug in my kitchen. This texture came from a rug. So once I had all my rubbings, I can start designing my wild thing. And I've mentioned this before that part of being a maker is making sure that you have a plan before you get started. So I took a close look at some of Maurice Sendak's illustrations of wild things. Check out these guys. They're really interesting because they're made of so many different animal parts and they have so much visual texture. There's hairy parts and feathery parts, fluffy curly parts, scaly parts, and a lot of his wild things, uh, I can recognize parts of other creatures. So basically, he's like created a scranimal, which is a scrambled animal. If you guys know me, you know how much I love scranimals. He's taken a little bit of his favorite parts from other creatures and put them together to make a new creature. So after looking at Maurice Sendak's uh, wild things, I sat down and made a plan for my wild thing. All right, with my plan ready to go, I can start collaging. Collaging is when you cut up different items. In this case, we're gonna take our 
rubbings and then you glue them together to make a new picture. So I am going to use the rubbings of the textures I found around my house and I'm gonna create my wild thing and I'm gonna follow my plan. I'm gonna cut my body into this shape, my arms into these shapes and so on and so forth. And I'm gonna do that by drawing out the shapes on the textures that I really like uh, for each part. So let me get started. Okay, so he's done, but I've got to add uh, some more details like his facial features, anything I want to add in the background, or any more visual texture I want to add like swirly curlies or um, lines that represent hair or scales, things like that. So I'm going to do that now and finish up my wild thing. Had a really good time creating a wild thing with me today please don't forget to share what you've made tag us at gallery north li hashtag art ventures at home hashtag gallery north hashtag the studio hashtag art ventures we would love to see what you are making at home don't forget that if you're really enjoying these episodes of Art Ventures at Home, when we reopen, you can join us at the studio for many of the fabulous programs we offer. Uh, one of which being our Art, Ven Art Ventures Summer Program. Uh, we have a discount currently uh, in order for those of you interested. Uh, you can visit gallerynorth.org to find out more information about our uh, summer program and its themes and pricing. If you're watching from YouTube, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you can keep up to date with all of our current episodes of Art Ventures at Home and all of the incredible content coming out of our campus in general, art talks, coffees and crits, Art Ventures at Home, 
and uh, we have some virtual classes uh, going up on our website uh, today. So if you're interested in taking a class with us uh, from the comfort of your home, you can do that. Uh, have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. If you're feeling really good about supporting Gallery North, you can do that on our website, gallerynorth.org slash donate. Strange and unusual times for everybody, but we can sure use your help so that we can continue to provide this free content. We really appreciate and love those of you who follow our lessons. Thank you for all of your support. Gallery North recognizes everyone who's working so hard during this really unusual time, and we appreciate everybody out there right now. So have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday for another episode of Art Ventures at home. Bye.